Okay, so we've discussed wave function collapse. So you've performed the measurement on system one, you found the particle where the dot is here. You've performed the measurement on system two, you found the particle. Second. I need to pause. Okay, I did a quick charge of that. Okay, okay so in system one, we found the particle uh, here. In system two, we found the particle here. System three here, here, here. And then what? And then, okay, so we found the particle, we wrote down, and then we release it again. Now these, ooh. Let's see that, that's what happened. Now, at that moment in time, we have an ensemble of the following five systems. The following five wave functions. So before, all of these were put into this purple wave function, the initial, no, sorry, um, they were in the blue wave function, identical wave function. Then at the time of the measurement, they were all in the purple wave function. We made the measurement, we performed the wave function collapse. And now in system one, the wave function is this. Sorry, I, I can't make it very, nice and even. Let's see, in system two, okay, in system one, it's rule to the right, left and right, okay. Um, okay, fine. I want to reproduce exactly what I drew there in system one. We found it a little bit to the right. This one is left. This one is right, right? Yeah, center and left. Center and left. This is now our new initial moment in time. This now serve as initial conditions and we release, release the particles, the size begin to evolve according to Schrodinger's equation again, and some time later, the wave functions will now be different. Okay, they, it will some something like this. This one might be something like this. This one might be something like this. This one might be something like that. And that one might be something like that. They will all be different, okay? and so on and so on, it evolves. <clears throat> okay, so that's position measurement. Okay, uh, so for example, if I want to measure the position of this system now, I'm most likely to get a particle here, maybe also here, but not very likely here, not very likely here, and so on. So that's interesting. So in other words, the wave function evolves in two ways. It evolves smoothly under the action of the Schrodinger's equation in between the prep and the measurement, or between one measurement and the next measurement, but it evolves in an abrupt way, like the wave function collapse. Um, during the during the measurement. Like this. Okay, it goes from purple to orange. Okay, what if I wanted to measure, what if I wanted to measure some other quantity? 
what if I wanted to measure momentum? So let's say, uh, go back to uh, this moment, uh, T naught. So this is time T naught, right? Right here, this is time T naught. So I prepared at T equals zero. I reached time T naught. And now instead of measuring position, I'm going to measure momentum. Just like with position, when I made the position measurement, after the measurement, the particle took on one of the possible concrete particular values of position. With momentum measurement, again, I will find one of the possible values of momentum, one of the possible concrete values of momentum. Concrete meaning actual value. Just like when I measure position, I will find either this or this or this. And at that point, the wave function becomes localized at that position. It's a wave function that corresponds to a particular value of position. If before the measurement of position, the, there was an uncertainty of position, there was a standard deviation of position. At the moment of measure after, immediately after, measurement of position when the wave function collapsed, the wave function corresponds to a particular value of position and the standard deviation of position becomes zero. It's a very localized, very peaky wave function right at that position. Same with momentum. First of all, uh, the outcomes of momentum measurement are distributed according to Fourier transform of wave function x at t naught. That we already know. We call it a of k t naught. So probability of getting so here's a of k. So here's system one, system two, system three, system four, system five. And let me just make up some a of k. Um, I don't know what color to use. Let me use dark blue. Some kind of a a of k and the a of k so let's say that this is a squared of k or a of k doesn't matter so this is this is my k axis and this is my a axis right this is my k a and so on this is the distribution of what i'm going this is the distribution of possible outcomes of momentum when I measure momentum, right? So what does this mean again? So uh, probability of getting a momentum around, uh, no, momentum around K naught, so here's K naught, is, uh, or I guess h bar k naught is given by 
to convert from k to momentum, you have to multiply by h bar. Okay, so the probability of getting this momentum is given by a of k times um, d h bar k. Again, to convert from k a of k naught to convert from k to momentum, just multiply by h bar. Okay, so that's the h bar equals h bar a of k dk a of k naught k naught. So this you already know the statistical meaning of the Fourier transform as the probability distribution of momentum. I'm not saying anything new. Now you perform momentum measurement. You perform momentum. You measure momentum. You measure momentum. You measure momentum. You, okay. You perform the momentum measurement. At that point, you know the momentum. Okay. In system one, sorry, my uh, iPad is acting up. In system, okay. So now measure momentum. In system one, you're going to get one particular value of momentum. So A of K, the probability distribution of momentum, or the A of K, magnitude of A of K is the probability distribution, will be a localized peak. So A of K will also be a localized peak. It will, give, it will be something like this. OK, so here's K. In system two, so let me use the same dots, right? So in system one, my outcome will be here. System two, my outcome will be here. System three, here, here, and here. All right. Okay, so now my Is a light blue color here, here, in system three. I got this momentum value, so I'm going to get a distribution localized here. In other words, I get particular values of momentum. And so on. I'm not going to draw the other ones. That's A of K. What about the wave function? Let me ask you a simple question. What the wave function corresponds to a well-defined value of momentum? In other words, give me a wave function that has a single well-defined wavelength. It's a plane wave. So this is A of K, A of K, this is A of K. This is after, right? This is all after the momentum measurement. That corresponds to the plane wave. Some coefficient e to the i k one x minus omega one t. So this is k one. This is k two. This one. What's the wave function? Well, it's the wave function that has for k the k two. So we have a e to the i. A two x minus omega two t, right? And wave function three is going to be a e to the i k three x minus omega three t. What's the relationship uh, between k and omega? Well, that depends on the potential energy. Okay, omega one is a function. Of uh, omega is a function of k, and that's called dispersion relation. And 
and the dispersion relation depends on a u. Uh, for free particle, omega equals h bar k squared over 2m. Okay? And so the energy is h bar omega h bar squared k squared over 2m. But that's just for free particle. For other particles, there's some other relation. There are other relations. We didn't really discuss how to get the dispersion relation, but the point is if you know the wave number, you know the frequency. So they're not independent. The point is when you measure position, the wave function after the collapse is such a wave function that corresponds to a particular value of position. When you measure momentum, the wave function after the this other type of collapse after the A of K collapse corresponds to the wave function that corresponds to a particular value of momentum. Now take a guess. Let's say you make the measurement of energy. The wave function after the new type of after the, the new type of collapse. Okay, for each kind of measurement, there's a, a particular collapse of the wave function. When you make the energy measurement, there's also going to be a wave function collapse. What does it collapse to? It collapses to the wave function that corresponds to a particular value of energy. Let me repeat. You make a position measurement, the wave function collapses into such a wave function that corresponds to a particular value of position. The what the value of position you're going to get is random. It's given by the probability distribution. But once you have made the measurement, you're going to get one of the possible values of position. And the wave function at that point has collapsed to a wave function that, that corresponds to the wave function of a particle with that particular position. You make a measurement of momentum. The wave function experiences a different kind of collapse. OK. Now it's A of K that collapses to a peak, but the wave function itself does not collapse to a peak. It collapses to a plane wave. It gets modified instantaneously into the plane wave form. And it's such a form of the wave function that corresponds to the wave function of a particle with that particular value of K. You make the measurement of energy and the wave function again experiences uh, instantaneous transformation. You can call it collapse again. And the wave and the wave function right after the measurement of energy will take on a form that corresponds to the wave function of a particle with that particular value of energy. Okay. So again, you have a wave function, position, measurement. And the wave func and the wave function collapses into a form centered on some position x naught. Okay. You have a wave function 
we perform momentum measurement. So you perform position measurement, you get X naught. And the wave function collapses into this form. You perform momentum measurement. Get H bar K naught. And the wave function is a wave function that corresponds to that particular wave number. And again, omega and k naught are related. If you want the mathematical form of this, again, so this is a plane wave. This is sometimes it's called Dirac delta function. But that's if you truly measure the position to arbitrary accuracy, right? In general, you cannot measure position to arbitrary accuracy. So it will be some very narrow Gaussian. You can also never measure momentum to arbitrary accuracy. So you're never gonna have exact value of momentum. You're gonna get a value of momentum very, with a very narrow spread. So realistically, it's not gonna be really a plane wave. It's gonna be a very, very broad wave packet, okay? So this is this, this for a particular K naught, but we are mystically our measurement as accuracy delta k. And so really after the measurement, you don't know exactly the value of k, but you know it within a small neighborhood of k. So you don't have a single harmonic, but you have a packet uh, that's, that corresponds to a very small spread of harmonics which is a very large spread in space. So you measure, you have a wave function, you measure position, you collapse the wave function to a wave function that corresponds to a particular position. You measure, you have a wave function, you measure momentum, you collapse the wave function that corresponds to that particular, some particular momentum. You have some wave function, let's continue. You have some wave function. Again, the same kind of wave function. Now you perform energy measurement, get E naught, and the wave function after will be a wave function that corresponds to one of the possible energy values. Okay. So for example, if it's particle in the box that we're tickling, measuring, massaging, then you're gonna get one of the wave functions of particle in the box. If it's a harmonic oscillator, then you're gonna get one of those modes or energy, uh, one of the modes of the harmonic oscillator and so on. So, so get one of the modes that we get. Obtain by solving 
time independent Schrodinger's equation. Why? Because those modes have a well defined energy, right? So, for example, if you have harmonic oscillator, you have E1, E0, E1, E2, this is one half h bar omega naught, this is three halves h bar omega naught, it's five halves h bar omega naught, and this has a wave function psi naught, psi one, psi two. So if it's a harmonic oscillator, we're gonna get one of those. If our system is defined by a different potential energy landscape, if it's interacting with the rest of the world by means of some other forces, some other potential energy, then they have their own ladder of states with their own wave functions that correspond to specific energies. And you're gonna get one of those. So for example, so this is, uh, so this one could be, for example, uh, this one could be, uh, for example, this one, okay? Okay, uh, it's not displaying well. Do you see what's going on? So this is all an example of a transformation of a wave function that can happen upon a measurement. Measurement induces a drastic transformation to the wave function and the wave function collapses to something else depending on what kind of measurement you perform. 